postponements to its mandate under the 2018 Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Act, the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission vowed to strictly enforce regulatory compliance and prevent any violation of consumer rights. To further address the matter, the FCCPC is actively, according to them, engaged in discussions with Ikeja Electric, the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, the Nigerian Electricity Management Services Agency, NEMSA, and other key stakeholders to clarify the phase-out process. Now, public affairs analyst Mustafa Ewila joins me now for more on this discussion. Thanks for joining us, Mustafa. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Jeff. Okay, are you in the category of those who use uh, a <laughs> unistep <to> paid meter? <laughs> because because I've been asked to upgrade by November. So, I, so uh, uh, frankly speaking, I don't even know the one I use. But I know that, uh, <laughs> you don't know what I use. This is unistep or the new ones, but I okay. know that I'm currently on prepaid meter in okay. many of my uh, okay. outlets. But uh, again, this is uh, another reminder to us as Nigerians to let us know that um, uh, there's really so much that we have to do as a country for us to have a better country. Okay. If you look at what has happened in our electricity sector in the past, in the past, if I, let's say ten years ago to now, you see how we've seen um, the sector transform from what they used to be NEPA to PHCN to now IKEDC and all other names that they call themselves like the discos. But generally, I, I do not think that. So for me, I think I'm essentially happy for. Um, regulatory bodies like uh, FCCC FCC. in place because I mean, if you are saying that you want to outface the Unistar prepaid meters, mm. that's I mean we understand that technology is evolving. True Those this. meters are old, mm. and don't let's forget that these meters have lifespan. They do. So if you really want to ensure meter accuracy, sometimes the metering accuracy, you see that sometimes some meet some old meters now are not even reading accurately anymore. Mm. And for, for NEPA to really keep up, I mean, EKEDC, I mean, a, lot of, a lot of us, we call them NEPA because that's <laughs> yeah. what we grew up. Yes, for that's years. That's what we grew up to, you know, to call them for years. But again, so in order for them to meet up with technology, yes, they are due for upgrades. Mm. But the, the big questions in the minds of everybody now who, is, who, who falls within that category of the EKEDC mm. is who caters or who covers the cost of replacement. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think that if you ask... 10 people out of those affected persons, yes. they will tell you that, yes, I mean, if the meter is working and if, if I recharge, I'm getting units and it's working effectively, mm. for me, on my own part, I'm good. Okay. So if, EKE, if uh, IKEDC needs to upgrade, upgrade, then that cost to be covered by IKEDC, it shouldn't be at my own expense. Okay. Because they are trying to, because, I mean, don't let's forget that EKEDC, IKEDC, you know, is the largest disco. All of, I mean, Nigeria, and um, I think they have about, uh, fairly about 700,000 customers. Okay. And they have about 200, and, uh, fairly about 200 and, uh, 2,500 metered customers. Uh -huh. So naturally, I think that that cost should be, you know, should be taken care of by IKEDC, that's the honest truth. Because uh, I know people who have recently bought even brand new meters, yes. and they are still malfunctioning. Uh -huh. So, I mean, I, I know somebody who, somewhere in Lekibu, but we, we, the meter was installed a few weeks ago. He has tried to recharge. Each time he recharge, he recharges, he gets more than the unit mm. he, he, he paid for. Wow. So, so the estate found that and they had to go and, you know, confiscate the meter because they felt that it was... It was but it's not the guy's fault. Mm. It's like paying for 10 units and you're getting 1,000 units. It's not the fault of the user. Is the meter that was provided. Okay, but did he escalate? Yeah, so he didn't escalate <laughs> until the end of the <laughs> But that's the, so, so we've seen that those yeah. meters are not, are not perfect. Mm. A lot of, a lot of, so, sometimes you even buy prepared meter in, after one month or two months, it breaks down. Yes. And, you know, and never tells you to come and pay for another one. So these mm. are issues. Okay. So these are issues. So I think that, so with FCCPC and, you know, with mm. the ongoing talks with NERC and NEMSA, Right. So, but, but, but in your opinion, do you think that the communication process is actually um, effective or even um, uh, long enough you know, so for people to even understand? Because some people are still saying that they don't really understand. Is it that they, uh, they have to go to the uh, IKDC or the DISCO to change uh, their unit staff for a new one, uh, are they supposed to go online? Because a lot of people still have gray areas as regards to this um, information and um, November is just around the corner. 
So again, I think that uh, in, every other, in every other thing we do as a government and, and as a people, we have seen over time that there's always communication gap between the government mm. or service providers and the users of these services. So if you're asking people that you want to upgrade the old meters and you're giving them... For me, I even think that the, the timeline is very short. Very short. Because right. November 14 is just mm -hmm. two weeks from now. So give them and like if, six if, months or something. Yes, and if IKEDC is serving about 700,000 members, customers, uh, let's even say you have 2,500 metered customers. Mm. So that means you want to throw... So within that time frame and now, how do you want people to go about... Mm -hmm. These meters are not even sufficient. Even the old ones... Even those who have applied for, who have even made them, and they are yet to get you know, delivery of uh, this and prepare Even the old people, people who have applied for, the, even the old ones, even the Unistar ones, have mm. not gotten it. Uh -huh. And now you want to outface these Unistar prepared meters and bring in the, the newest technology, and you are giving a very two weeks time frame to go around the whole of this country. I, for me, I just think that this is another avenue to create wealth for some um, unscrupulous people. That's the honest truth. Mm. Because even if you look at the process of getting prepared meter, mm -hmm. Justin, it is one of the most difficult things in this country. But what is, should, it, should it be that I mean, it should, be, it should be a thing that you walk into an IKEDC office or a, you know, a phone, a disco Any office, the disco, yeah. pay and take your meter home. But you pay, you start to wait end, endlessly for somebody to come and install meter and at the end, and at the end, somebody somebody starts to tell you that you have to pay There's an some extra amount. You have yes. to lobby. You have to lobby. That's yeah. the honest truth. For the common that's one of the big problems we have in this country. In the country where people cannot pay for services freely, yeah. after you pay for the services, you have to lobby somebody or beg somebody to come and still deliver the service to your doorstep. This is one of the issues we're having in this country, and it must stop. Yeah. So, if you look at what has happened, what is really happening, so the old meters are now available. I, 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 because of, because I'm into the real estate uh, in the profession, mm. we have applied for meters in certain properties in certain areas mm. to get those meters. Somebody just last week, somebody was going to come and install the pre meter somewhere in somewhere in the quarter for me, mm. and so, so somebody was was supposed to come for a pre inspection of the property. This lady came; she did not even wait one minute. Mm. She called me and I told her I'll be there for you to to take you to the property. She left within. Uh, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm very sure the reason why she left, she did not even wait five minutes for me to even get to the gate to take her to the property. She Good left point. very arrogantly. And the reason for that, I know, what, I, know what, I know where they are going to. They want you to start begging them, to start lobbying them, to say, please, come back and inspect. Because they know that somebody is already living in that house, and this woman is, you know, has been running on generator for a few weeks, for a few months now. Mm. So, these are, so the process also, I think that FCCPC still, needs a, still has a lot to do. There needs to be a lot of overhauling in our power sector, mm. with our discos. The, 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 the kind of attitudes, the kind of services that are being rendered to customers are unacceptable. Mm. I know people who have been trying to recharge for weeks now. Just yes, to, because I, now. I see the part, the issue of communication. Yes. You know, they, they mentioned that at a particular day, they might not be able to, to recharge. You know, so you have to recharge ahead. You, you have know, to recharge ahead. Even when you, you might not really have the well door at that particular time, and they might yes. be conditions on when and when you can when recharge. You can recharge, when you can pay for a free service that you are, a service that you are paying for, you cannot mm. buy it at the time you want it. Mm. And that's what we're talking about last week, about the issues of even these banks too. Is mm. the issues I think FCCPC needs to, you know, do a lot to make sure that service, you know, customers get value for their money. Yeah. And these service providers are, be, are being called for questioning. You cannot say you are rendering services that people are not getting. You are charging them for it. Mm. People are in darkness just because they cannot recharge. People are people are at home right now. People are in their offices. They cannot transact because some banks have shut down their. I mean, the services have been shut down. Mm -hmm. I was all over. I was all over the island yesterday trying to transfer money from a particular bank to another bank. Mm. It took me the whole of the day. I can imagine. Wasted day. I know. Wasted day. So this is the issue. So I think that FCCPC and these regulatory bodies needs to call these guys to question it. Mm. What services are you rendering when people cannot get services as I went due? Mm. So I so I think that so if if, if um, IKEDC really wants this uh, issue of outfacing these old meters to really come come yeah. to life. They must cater for the cost of the of replacement and give enough time. And give enough time saying. for okay. two, two weeks from now is not enough. Mm. If you are servicing two thousand five hundred metered customers, and don't forget two thousand five hundred seventy six metered customers mm. and seven hundred thousand customers general, on IKEDC, yeah. yes. and you want this process to be done in two weeks, and you say you want to come and cost uh, and yet data uh, meters uh, and you throw them in darkness. Mm. It's not going to be and there are even talks that uh, for those who don't start the process on time, they might they risk being put on. 
estimated billing. I know the issues we've had with yes. estimated billing. You know, they just come, you know, all of a sudden and just... No, uh, there's no, there's no need to mind what just <laughs> Estimated billing is a complete fraud. That's that's the thing. Because people okay. somebody just sit down somewhere and, and off and just write something and say, mm. your bill for next month is one million. I have an office somewhere in the, somewhere in the complex there in, in Lekki. They, they don't come to read anything. They just write you. Somebody just sits somewhere and writes anything they fuse based on how he likes oh, you. No how you like you. They just no tell you that this is what you expect to consume. What you have used. So all these are issues, and I think that we must continue to talk about these things. Mm. Let's still talk about the prepaid meters because uh, I know there. Are, aside from this um, upgrade, I know there are several issues uh, as regards uh, you know customers getting value you know for money. Because I remember at the point when when I moved into an apartment sometime last year, you know I was assigned a prepaid meter. You know that was not mine. At the end of it all, I had recharged, although it was an internal stuff, I was refunded, but I was now given another prepaid meter and I had to battle the issue of paying what someone you know, was owing yeah. for a long time and then each time I recharge it was, uh, no, I couldn't even recharge or uh, they said I had to clear mm -hmm. the outstanding first before I could not get start on the first. Outstanding that you did not use. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for, that's part of the first note and yeah. um, you know that's my own case, but some first, yeah. in some cases uh, you get a prepaid meter, and uh, each time you 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 uh, recharge, you don't get the full exact value. For instance, if you're supposed to get maybe uh, 60 units for a 5,000 5, yeah. recharge, you might get maybe like a, a 30 or a 20 because you are servicing old debt. But but who's to be blamed really in all of this? I just moved in and that I'm paying what someone else used. Yeah, so we've seen should we bring the FCCPC and the NEIC yeah, so, into so, this so, matter? So all these things happen because people don't even know their rights. Aha. Uh -huh. So. For a, for a person who has experienced such a scenario like yours now, mm. or for some no, okay, though, I collected my money. Of course, of course, <laughs> must, you must pay I you collected my is, money. Is a, is, a, is a direct liability on the landlord to yes. pay that outstanding mm. before the new tenant comes in, mm. or to find a way of getting the outstanding from the old tenant. So what now happens again? What now happens is that people don't even know the right authorities to report all these irregularities. Mm -hmm. Irregularities too. Yeah, you are trying to recharge. You have your money. You want to buy a token. You cannot recharge. You are stuck in the middle. Mm. You call Nepal. The, you call wherever the I mean wherever the disco name is. You call mm. them, and nobody's responding to you. But meanwhile, during all that back and forth, the customer is suffering. Is in darkness. Can do anything. I've experienced that too. For two, three weeks, I could not recharge. Mm -hmm. I had to be going back and forth. Meanwhile, I mean, and the customers, the, the way these people even address you at times, I see. So I don't even think there's any value for customers. They don't even. So I think that. So I think what is doable is. IEK EDC, or is, um, I mean, we have about 11 discos. Yeah. Aside, so they need to understand that Nigerians are customers. Mm. Without Nigerians, you cannot exist as a company because these are the, these are the users of your services. True. So you need to treat customers with respect and you know to make sure make sure that they get value for their money. Mm. But when Nigerians don't even know where to complain, you can write any ERC for such cases. They, I mean, in cases where cases of overbilling or mm. cases of oh your meter just practically shut down mm. and it's not working, or cases of even this current cases. Now that's why FCCPC have gotten a lot of petitions mm. about this complaint. People are already apprehensive that what will happen. If we are not able to, you know, to swap these meters for the for the newer ones, what will happen? Mm. At the end, their meters might just shut down. They might just, you know, and they'll be in darkness until you. And people don't want estimated billing because we've seen what has happened. It's, it's a total fraud. Like you said, it's fraud. So, so yeah. that's so, so so that's why, as Nigerians, you need to even know the right uh, the right authority to complain to. Mm. Pick up your pen and write any ROC and lay your complaints, and they'll tell you the the next steps to follow. But in a place where people are not being checkmated, where these discos are not being checkmated, we we'll continue to see. A lot of lapses from them. Okay. I, know, I know a lot of people are yet to be metered, uh, yes. you know, on the prepaid band, you know, but some people would say, as a school of thought, I just want you to just react. Yeah. It's just a general talk yeah. right now. Uh, some people would say that uh, because of this whole issue of band A, band A thingy, a lot of people would say that, um, you know, on the average, they spend almost 40 to 50,000 naira yes. on, on, on electricity monthly, and then they'd rather say, um, why not just use direct from you know, the, the discos? Is it really sensible or profitable or economic uh, why is it really economic rather to just uh, stay on the prepaid meter as against uh, the estimated bill the estimated bill because look at looking at it right now the, even the prepaid meters are like they cost an arm and a leg. Okay, so at, at the long run, <laughs> at the long run, it's more no, profitable. Because you will be thinking yes, like, okay, why turn off my air conditioning? Yes, that's, <laughs> that's the normal thing to do, Justin. 
at the long run, at the long run, you know, I know not talk of that. I had a conversation with somebody yesterday. Yes. The honest truth is, yes. a lot of people would naturally prefer to stay on the on the postpaid, which is right. the estimated billing. Okay. But that one, at the long run, is is kind of uh, is more expensive. I'll, I'll tell you. Is so it? Be, yes, it's more expensive because. I know people, it's somebody will pay that high as 20,000 naira per month on mm. postpaid billing. Okay. Meanwhile, is, it, I, is it commonly? Uh, you know, just a flat, flat, just a flat, just a okay. two bedroom flat, two bedroom flat. Mm. But the honest truth is, you can naturally regulate what you want to consume on prepaid meters. All right. But because Nigerians are very used used to the lifestyle of turning on all your lights. Even when you're not, you, you know, don't need them. Turning on all your freezers, turning on all your TVs. People even leave the television on. Get your strap. You know, I've, I've had to leave my... my <laughs> freezer <laughs> for one. <laughs> you know, the time we invite the tradition of these foreign countries, yeah. in the United Kingdom or advanced countries, yeah. you turn on... It's only the room that you are in yes. that you will have the light on. But okay. people will be in the living room and leave all the lights in the bedroom on. <laughs> leave all the AC on. Leave all the fan on. Leave all the television on. Who is watching it? Who is watching so the high time we must so we, we must be very we must be very prudent too. So okay. the paid beta is still the best. All right. But the issue where the the way the area where it is not being okay. distributed properly is the problem. All right. So the thing is that um, the FCCPC should just put um, the this close and of course the NERC on their toes because Nigerians yeah. cannot really be paying for when they are not getting value yes. and then even no. if you are doing an upgrade you should bear some cost. That's what you're saying. In yeah, general. you must carry, right. carry that cost of upgrade. Not. Put it on the customers. All right, that's as much as we can yes. take on the show for today. Most of a very big thank you to thank you, you Mustafa, you. for your time. Mustafa, a Wenla public affairs analyst and, of course, a real estate and practitioner. We'll be back again, same time next time. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there.